making life worth living and retirement worth having is really about how we honor the Lord in our lives. You see, there are many people who profess to be of a particular faith. They come from a variety of little countries. They come from a variety of ideologies. They become completely immersed in their own ideology of what the God in heaven is doing in their life or other people's lives. They sit proudly in judgment. They literally think they're doing the Lord's work. But what if they're really off track in life? You see, practically being off track in life is so easy to spot that it's not even funny for most people. But in truth, being off track in life might not necessarily be the truth. Some people really think a person is off track in life if they have no money. Other people who are impoverished realize the gift and the freedom of having no financial responsibilities other than providing for themselves food and shelter for a little while. You see, practically I saw a homeless man, I'm pretty sure he was homeless, where he just was someone who was struggling in life, and I've seen him several times. But I also know that people plant seeds trying to look like something, and then I saw a man walk in totally looking just like that homeless man, in different clothing, but the same physical body attributes, in how he carried himself, how he turned a corner, but he wasn't walking as if he was ill. You see, I think it's a test of people, of how they respond to someone who looks different. I also think that practically the Lord has shown that man that he was lying, and that he was not getting what he wanted through the lie. He struck a huge smile at me, and I thought maybe there was someone standing behind me, but openly I was in the middle of doing work on my computer. I also feel that if he really wanted to talk to me, it was his job to walk up to me, introduce himself, and say something. And then I'd have the chance, half of a little chance, to pray, to pause, and to present my response. You see, that's what a man does. When I'm out networking with people, I do that. I listen to what's going on in my life or other people's lives, and I wait for the right moment to say the right thing. I'm openly, actively networking, despite what's gone on in my life from the harm of other people thinking they had the lawful right to ruin a man's life and records. But in truth, I go on because the Lord helps me to do so. I continue to record audio files. I continue to produce content. I continue to produce ideologies. I continue to think of new ideas. I continue to write new scripts. I continue to produce new marketing ideas. And openly, when I listened to two men talking in a restaurant the other day, I was flabbergasted at the incredible waste of time. The younger man was professing no name in his conversation. He was saying friggin' every couple of minutes, and I thought, who taught this man professional sales techniques? I literally did not think we had gotten to a point in society where that was appropriate behavior. What I saw was immaturity, practically, and I saw him sort of crap all over the questions he was being asked and literally did not answer. I saw him puffing himself up. I saw him bad-mouthing other firms, and I just thought, gosh, if he was my employee, I wouldn't want him participating in that little way. But openly, that's my opinion, and that was my impression, and that was sadly my inappropriate judgment because I really wasn't involved in that conversation, but I was suffering through having to listen to it because the man was talking so loudly, he wasn't really thinking about other people around him. We all do that sometimes, and even sometimes we talk loudly or talk to ourselves just to put people off, to get them to leave us alone. But in truth, they were just having a business conversation, but my greatest sense of the over-forced requirement of hearing them talk was that they had no marketing planning. They had not put together one idea about what it was that they were really trying to accomplish, and they were trying to do it all with technology, and something I've learned over the course of time of being in marketing, that relationship marketing is the most important aspect of any marketing campaign. Technology has moved on so quickly now that everybody wants to use technology to make millions. Some people find the formula and do it. I literally attended a group of people who did that with affiliated marketing. I attended week after week or month after month or whatever the heck it was time that we would go and have these little meetings and I would ask the leader, could you please teach me just this one little technique so that I could make some more money with what I'm trying to do and she would never do it. Even when I asked her for the price, she still would hem and haw and piss around. And I thought, you know, people struggle in life. 
and I was about to lose my house. I sort of let her know that, and it didn't seem to phase her at all. And I thought, wow, if everything fell out of the bottom of your life, where it was just you having to deal with your children, and your husband left you, and all these things, how would you feel? Would you feel the same little way of not being willing to help someone? Practically, there's always someone sitting in judgment on someone else. What we really have to ask is whether or not they lawfully have the right in the Lord's house. You see, federal law might give someone lawful rights locally, and it might also impeach them if they fail in their duties. But when we think about, has the Lord chosen this path for this individual, we don't have the time to pray is not true, that we don't often take the time to sit there and ponder, to listen to someone's life story, and to pause long enough to pray enough in our minds and present enough in our souls and our spirits that we're making sure that what we say not only doesn't dishonor our work, but doesn't dishonor the Lord in his plan for someone's life. You see, many people go through struggle to produce a better result for other people, but at the same time, there are people in this world who think they have the lawful right to take away another person's lawful right to a lot of parts of their being. Those people lie, steal, and cheat a man or a woman out of their life. They openly, actively think that God put them on the planet to sit literally in judgment of other people and make decisions for that individual about their physicality or any other aspect of their life. That is not necessarily the case. We have plenty of people in jail who literally should not be there. We have plenty of people who are in jail that should be there, but the training programs are sort of suffering right now. We are not producing enough physicians to go in. It's not necessarily the case that we are not producing enough pastoral people being willing to go in and literally be there on a daily basis in volunteerism or in paid work to talk to people about God, to help them discover their path in life and to literally give them prophetic wisdom of how they could change and take their incredible skills and talents and turn it into something productive, honest, good, and literally truthful in front of the house of the Lord. When I talk about the house of the Lord, I'm talking about the heavenly host in this world. You see, practically, I was raised Methodist, but I didn't really come into my own understanding of spirituality until about college. And at that time, I got myself involved in sort of an odd little church, and I realized quickly that these, these mentors were trying to become my parents, and that wasn't right for me. I openly moved on. I went off to a foreign land. I learned about other aspects of religion, other ways in which the Tower of Babel has presented itself in the world, and I discovered that Christians don't know everything in the world there is to know about the Lord. I have learned other aspects of religions. I've studied Kabbalah. I've studied with a monk. I've also studied a lot of law of attraction. I understand the policy of how that's supposed to work. The problem is that people in our lives often don't play along with the Lord's plan for their life and others. They simply want to be in control all the time, so much to the point that they push people from their lives. Not only do they push people from their lives, they do things to ruin people's lives. They lie to police, they destroy records, they take property, and they literally think that somehow God is being honored in that moment, and I just don't see it. It's pretty fundamental, the Bible tenets that we have long held high in regard with regard to our own land in America. Thou shall not steal is a pretty standard thing in the Bible, and it's openly a part of every aspect of human law that exists today. The Declaration of Human Rights is something I talk about regularly because I see the violations of people's rights every day. Federal law protects us from theft as well, and even state and local law says, hey, don't take something that you did not personally earn a living to produce for your life. That's pretty common sense stuff in my opinion. We teach our children not to take things, and if we don't, we are the failure as parents. Openly, the people who take things, who might literally be in law enforcement, are lying to themselves about their rights in another person's life. Now, why do I hit them? Because openly, my whole life has been harmed by people who thought they had the authority and the right to do things on a man's life, and they don't, especially when I put all my faith in the Lord and it proves itself every single time. But I'm sort of a pastor of sorts these days. I like to be called the dragon priest, and in jail, I put the word down priest. 
when I left Bible verses for men who really were struggling and looking for the pastor to come when they requested him and he or she would never come in to that block. And I thought, why not? Trying to get a copy of the Quran was like pulling teeth, and openly I did leave my Bible with them because it wasn't large enough print for me to see. But I did only underline one or two passages, but I made my own notes that I brought with me. Now since my return to a position of relationship with someone who literally destroyed my life, I openly have to be cautious. Most people in life have to be cautious about literally the people they allow into their lives for a lot of reasons. One, we have to simply say, did the Lord really put that person on my path for any reason whatsoever? Two, we have to really look at, is this person going to help me to through my struggles, no matter what I'm going through? Will they drop it all? Will they stand in? Will they help in a way that I'm interested in going forward in my life? Or are they trying to monkey and meddle and do things illicitly and illegally and immorally, secretly, in a way to ruin or control a life? That is not God, and it's certainly, most certainly, not Jesus Christ in anyone's life. You see, the Lord is something that I talk about regularly because I've seen the energetic forces that literally work in this world. Now, I don't mean I'm seeing things, so let's not make sure I'm getting some mental health provider to think he's got some fodder for some little report he's writing. What I'm really talking about is that I see how God works, meaning I observe interesting signs and I allow those signs to help guide me in my faith walk, my practice of living out loud as a faithful person. And openly, it's been proven time and time again, the more that I listen to the Holy Spirit, the better off my life is, even in poverty. The magic of God is beyond control, is absolute truth. But we have to be open to seeing the magic. We have to be open for to praising his name. And we openly have to be ready for anything that it brings with us. In life, we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for someone. There's only one thing I've wanted for many Christmases now, and I'm still waiting for that girl to get her head pulled from her ass about her stupid choices, that the Lord has put me here for a reason, that she was brought into my life for a reason, and that the signs I get literally every day for her life is more than enough for me to be patient kind, loving, forgiving, and considerate of what the Lord has planned for me and that girl. But openly there will be other people outside of that who will try to interfere, will try to interrupt, will try to literally take away my lawful rights under the Lord's house of producing a favorable life for me and someone else. In your life, who allows you to do things is not the reality. But in our life, technologies have been utilized to voyeur in on our lives, to socially engineer conversations, and frankly, it's time to take back talk. We take back talk by putting together opportunities in time where we can literally meet some person that we've been involved with someplace, somewhere, private enough that we can have conversation, but public enough that we feel safe, and openly remove the barriers to relationships. Now this has openly been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications, LLC, talking about real life, real things, real relationships, real making of a lifetime of retirement income, and practically how we live out our days representing the Lord.